Time now for an early happy hour. Compliments of Luke Burbank. Cheers. It looked for all the world like an actual sporting event was taking place on a recent Friday here in Portland, Oregon. There were cheerleaders, news cameras. They even cut down a net. But, in fact, all of this was to celebrate the opening of a sports bar. And Jamie Orr was first in line. It feels like a very monumental day. Um, not just in Portland, but for women's sports. That's because this isn't just any sports bar. It's the first one in America that exclusively shows women's sports on all of its TVs. If you're mostly a fan of men's sports, it would never even occur to you that a bar might not be showing the championship game or might have the sound turned off. But that's exactly what happened back in 2019 when Jenny Wynn and her friends wanted to watch Baylor versus Notre Dame in the Women's NCAA Championship. At the, end of the, night. the game was one for the ages. It ended up being just like a spectacular game. On the drive for the lead, got it to go! But the audio feed was non-existent, at least in the bar where Wynn and her friends were watching. Somebody was like, yeah, it would have been better if the sound were on. And so she had a thought, that kind of thought you might have after a couple of beers but never follow up on. I said something to the effect of, the only way we're ever gonna be able to watch a women's game like in its full glory is if we had our own place. Wynn and her friends even had a name for this still mythical bar that she fantasized about opening someday. The sports bra. You know, because it just makes sense. Like, just switch a couple letters around. A little bit after that, I was like, I know what the tagline's gonna be. We support women. <laughs> and it just, it was a big joke. But that joke got serious after the Me Too movement and the pandemic had Win looking for a way to make an impact on the culture in whatever way she could. You know, the whole country was going through a phase of reprioritizing what was important. However, Jenny's mom, whom she'd been working for at their family real estate company, was dubious. I yelled at her and I said, this is not good. With the COVID and labor shortage, it's not going to work. But she told me, she said, mom, you cannot stop me. I am doing it. And so she did, raising over $100,000 on Kickstarter. Along the way, she and the bar became something of a media sensation. One of its kind in the world. But the most challenging part of running the sports bra might actually be finding enough televised women's sports to keep the TVs busy. Only 4% of all sports on TV are women's sports. So when you have that kind of a discrepancy, there's going to be issues. I thought it was going to but be changing that might be part of Wynn's plan. In the 50 years since the landmark Title IX legislation, millions of girls gained access to athletics. So it's not that women aren't playing sports, it's that the networks tend not to broadcast them. I'm asking a lot of networks, streaming services, and all of these things, questions that they've never encountered before. So a lot of it is almost like taking your machete and cutting through the brush. It's hard and it's a slog. On this night, however, there was no shortage of content. It was the semifinals of the NCAA Women's Final Four. The sports bra would be packed, and the volume would be turned up all the way. <laughs>